you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Acts. We've been teaching about the foundation of the church, about the early church. And we've said that it was started, it was not something that just became because people wanted it. It was something that was born of God. And it was born of the Holy Ghost. And we've, we've said that up till the last couple of chapters, the early church was all Jews. Uh, the gospel had not yet went to the Gentiles. And the man that I think, and there's no scripture to back it, but I still believe that Apostle Paul, was, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, and I believe that Apostle Paul was probably part of the Sanhedrin court that condemned Christ to Calvary. And I think, I think that uh, as we go along and we've studied uh, the power of God and how it moved with signs, it's so important. And I've said this for a few weeks, but I want to get to a certain place before we teach on this. But I'm going to do a very thorough teaching on the gift of tongues, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and how that God moved in the early church. We're going to do that here coming up in the next few weeks. It's something that most preachers don't preach on and don't teach on. But uh, I believe that we ought to know God's Word and what God says. So uh, we're, going to, we're going to teach on this in just a, just a few weeks. But I wanted to get to a place here in the book of Acts uh, concerning the early church and bring a lot of things to your understanding. And uh, we've, we've talked here in the last chapter or two about the first missionary of Apostle Paul, Barnabas, as they went out of Antioch and they went up towards, uh, out into the Mediterranean Sea and went around the coast, went up through into uh, the other Antioch in Poseidon, which was in what we call now as Turkey. But uh, how that they went up through there uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, how that Apostle P Paul was not the first one to bring the gospel to the Gentiles, even though he was called of God, cast down on the road to Damascus, and God called him and said these two things that he was going to do, and he was going to take his gospel uh, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and unto the rest of the world. And the second thing was that he was going to suffer. And we know that there's never been a man beyond Jesus Christ that ever suffered as much as Apostle Paul did. His, Paul, his name was Saul when he was cast down on the road to Damascus, but he was changed to Paul. Uh, and he became the one that God ordained and took the gospel and uh, gave birth to the early churches. Uh, but we've seen as we've been studying this, and I'm not going to dwell here a long time, but it kind of brings a message down to us and kind of brings to light that uh, everything about being a Christian uh, is about one thing, and that is to take the message of Jesus Christ and what He's done for us to the lost that live around us. Jesus never came to heal everybody, although He healed many. He never came to do these great things that so many uh, get uh, maybe involved in and maybe even brag a little bit about. But Jesus came in a very humble fashion. He grew up in a very humble way. He was a carpenter's son. And He came to fulfill the very mission of God. And the mission of God was a mission of love. And His mission was to seek out the lost world and to invite them back to God. And when they crucified Him on the cross, He paid the price. He gave the very last drop of His blood. They didn't take it. He gave it. They didn't crucify Him. He died of His own will. They couldn't have crucified Him had He wanted to bring about the deity side of who He was. He could have called 12,000, 10,000 angels and they would have
have defended him there on Calvary. They could not have killed him, but he died for us. But that's all part of the message and what happened in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. The church of Jesus Christ was born. The power of God came down. The power of God still exists. God is still all-powerful. God still all knows everything. And God is still everywhere all the time. There is no place above the heavens, below the hell. God is. There is no wit that can describe who He is. He's beyond anything that we can imagine. But we've talked about the early church. And of all the signs and the wonders that took place. And the mighty things that God showed us. We're going to kind of refresh this up a little bit this evening. We're not going to do a lot of teaching. But I know we've been gone for a week or so there where we had to go to Florida. But uh, I want to say that uh, it's important for you to understand the church. The church has nothing to do with a preacher. The church has nothing to do with an organization. The church doesn't have anything to do with what man has done at all. The church is the body of Jesus Christ. There are many members in the body. But you've got to have faith in Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed. And then you've got to confess Him that He is your Savior. Then it comes to the place to where we've got to prepare in the Word of God. Now, Apostle Paul had ministered. He had given birth to many churches. The Gentiles had heard the gospel. Cornelius and his family and many friends were saved. And the power of the Holy Ghost came down and they spoke in tongues just like they did on the day of Pentecost. But it wasn't a language that people didn't understand. They knew what it was. They heard what it was. And the power of God was demonstrated and God told them before this ever took place that He would show signs and wonders and that they would speak in these other tongues. So we've got to understand God has always been God. Jesus is His Son. The church of Jesus Christ was born of the power of the Holy Ghost. It was not formed. It was born of God. And the power of God that came down on the day of Pentecost is the same power that we live in. Jesus told the woman at Samaria, there at the well, He had wandered through the land where the Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. And He told her, He said, the hour has come when they, would, they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And children, let me tell you, you can shout your head off, but if you're out of the Spirit of God, It'll amount to nothing. But you can sit there and not say a word and just shed a tear from the joy of the presence of God in your heart. And God is there and God will bless it. That's the church. That's the foundation of the church. And the church has never been, we've been giving account after account after account of the persecution that the devil has brought upon God's children ever since the church was born. It's still here today. And I've been preaching now for the last year and a half in a different manner than I've ever preached in my life about the evil that we have that we've not faced in our lifetime. There's always been sin. And there's always been people that have done a few bad things. There's always been those that come to the place of hatred so much that they would kill. But let me tell you something, children. There's something on the streets right now that we have never seen in our life. There is an evil that we have never wrestled with. And it's coming to wane. It's not a far off anymore. It's right here. And let me tell you something. The foundation of God's church is still steadfast and sure. And I'm glad to be a part of it. How about you? Amen. Are you glad to be a part of a living church? Amen. Do you have the Spirit of God in your life? Do you know God? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's read just a little bit. You know, Apostle Paul there in the fourth, 14th chapter, 
he had uh, set his eyes steadfast on this one and God had given him the healing that he needed just because Apostle Paul was given the power to do it. Apostle Paul didn't have the power of his own, but God gave him this. And God brought this sign and wonder so that the Jews that were persecuting the family of God, and I've said, and this is one lesson, if we don't get anything else out of all the teaching I've done on the book of Acts, is that just about every time there's been trouble in the church, it came from within. Amen. Yes, sir. It came from God's people. And we've got to understand that we've got to endure. And we've got to bring forth the peace and the love that God wanted us to do. Don't blame everybody else for how bad they are. We've got to make sure that we're who God wants us to be. That's, if you can't see that in the early church and the teaching in the book of Acts, it wasn't about what all the world was doing around Apostle Paul and Peter and Barnabas and Silas and beating them. It was about what they did. And in this scripture we're going to read this evening, I think you're going to see how important it is when the devil knocks you down. Get back up. Bob Arrington, out of an evangelist out of Louisiana, he preached a message one time and I heard it and I've never got over it. But he's, he had suffered so much and the devil had done so much to him and he wanted to preach the gospel and the devil just kept hitting him in the face one thing after another. And he said, he's knocked me down so many times. But he said, I want to make a statement here today and I want to say it myself. He said, I may be knocked down, I may get down, but I'm not going to stay down. He said, I'll either be up or getting up. Amen. And I, I've never forgot those words. That's what Apostle Paul was. You're going to see that as we read this here today. And this should give every Christian here strength to know that we all fight battles. We all go through tough times. We all suffer. But I'll tell you what, God has never left one of you. And He never will. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. These people were getting ready. They had brought out all of these garlands and they had come out and the whole city after this miracle, had come out to just praise Apostle Paul like he was some God that had come down out of heaven. And Apostle Paul stopped them. I'm going to back up, read just a few verses. But it says that in the 13th verse of the 13th chapter, it says, Now when Paul and his company loose... No, I think I'm in the wrong chapter. It said in the 13th verse of the 14th chapter, after they had called them gods, Jupiter, and, and uh, how that uh, they had called Paul Mercurius, how that they had washed him like they were some kind of a god, it said the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. They were going to give sacrifices. They were going to fall down and worship Paul and Barnabas. But it said, when Paul and when the apostle Paul, Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes. They tore their clothes off. And they ran in among the people and cried out, saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of passions with you. We're just like you. We're not some God. You don't want to worship us. That's what we're trying to preach to you. Worship God. He said, we are also men of like passion with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Yes. Woo. Which made heaven and earth and the sea. He said, that's where you want to worship and do your sacrifices. And all things that are therein, everything, the glory goes to God. It said, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. He's saying, 
that in time past, God didn't meet with the Gentile people. God didn't interfere with the way they wanted to walk. They walked in their own ways. But He said, I'm telling you about a gospel that has called every man to God. That's what Apostle Paul was trying to tell them. And He said, the worship that you have ought to be towards God and not towards man. And I, I thought about it while I preached, while I've been studying on it. There's a lot of preachers today they give back a little bit of the glory that man has given them and raised them up on these elevations and levels and with their gifts and their money, they wouldn't even want to be in the church. There's a lot of preachers today that ought to come to their church on Sunday morning and say, wait a minute, I've been wrong. They've lifted up their self and how great they are and what all they people have done they've got right on the bandwagon and you've got churches that have lifted these men up above where man is supposed to be exalted if anybody is to be exalted it's God Amen. if there's any man that ever walked on earth that's to be exalted it's Jesus Christ Amen. not a preacher not a deacon not a brother or a sister that's a member of his body the glory and the edification should go to Jesus amen Amen. It says here, Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. He said, This hath been done in secret, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. He said, Aren't we so blessed? And the glory goes to God, not to me and Barnabas. He said, And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. He said he couldn't keep them. They still wanted to worship them as gods. But he said there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, they drew him out of the city Supposing that he had been dead. Can you understand that? Can you understand me preaching out here on the sidewalk in Wayne and they stone me till they leave me for dead and they drag me out of the city on the outsides of the city and they say he's gone, he's dead? Let me tell you something, children. There's going to be a lot of suffering between here and heaven. Some of us will suffer. And I don't think we've even seen the start, hardly, of the persecution that you're going to see in your lifetime against the Christian. Come on. It's coming. Yes. God said He would. The hearts of many have waxed so cold, they don't even have a conscience. They hate God. They hate His people. Said with these sayings, uh, well, no, it says, How be it as the disciples stood round about him, he arose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to the Derby. Can you say amen? Praise God, he's able. What about it? What if you get down? What if you have a hard time? You're just going to lay there and act like you're dead? There's a lesson in this for all of us. Amen. Bless your heart. We've got to get back up. We've got to get back in the battle. Don't listen to the devil. Don't have a conversation with him. And if, if you've never understood a message I ever taught to you, whenever Jesus Christ was in the wilderness, He gave us the example that we should live by. And that was that we'll defeat the devil by the Word of God. And we'll never go one foot to the good side if we stand and talk with the devil he'll get you every time don't get in a conversation with the devil when he tempts you put him where he's supposed to be and that's behind you and you go forward towards Jesus amen because you'll never be but it said here uh, that he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with them with Barnabas to Derby. I wish I had a big map so I could show you. 
Uh, I've got some maps in my Bible that at the end of this service, if you'd like to come and kind of look at it all, I'll kind of uh, try to help you see it for just a moment. Uh, but we can do it another time if it's too late for you. But it says, they went down to that derby. They were up here in Antioch. And they started, they left town and they went kind of deeper into Turkey towards the city of Derby. But you know what? They didn't quit preaching. Brother Ernie, if you just about got beat to death yesterday, would you be out here preaching to him again tomorrow? That's what Paul did. That's what we're to do. They can't shut up God's people. Amen? Don't ever let them try to shut you up. But they went down to Derby and said that when they had preached the gospel in the city and had taught many, they returned unto Lystria and to Oconium and Antioch. They went right back up there where they just about got beat to death. And he said, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. He said, don't quit. Don't let this discourage you. What has happened is to God's glory and just keep taking the message of Jesus Christ forward. It said, when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting. How many of you have ever fasted? Do you understand what fasting before God is? It's when you come to the place to where you're serious enough without God that food is not as important as it was and for a time you separate yourself without eating, without drinking, however you want to bring your fast on, and you spend time with God. I've had many times that I've had to do that. Because that's where your soul is healed. You spend time with Jesus, and you'll get everything right. Amen? Amen. But it said they fasted. They prayed with fasting and they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Poseidon, they came to Pamphylia. That's on down towards the Mediterranean Sea. That's coming out of Iconium back down towards the Mediterranean Seashore. But they went down there and it said, And after they had passed through Poseidon and to, and to Pamphylia, when they had preached the word in Perga, which is another little town there, when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia, and they sailed to Antioch. And this is coming along the northern part of the Mediterranean Sea, back to Antioch, which is up next to Syria, where they were first called Christians. There's two Antiochs. There's one that's up towards Turkey over here in the middle of the Mediterranean. And then there's the one that they just sailed to that's over next to Syria. And they said that uh, they, they sailed to Antioch from which they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. In other words, God's grace was with them and they trusted Him and they went believing that God had to open the door and they were to continue. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Can you say amen to that? And there they abode a long time with the disciples. Children, let me say to you here as we close. We're going to close there before we get into the next chapter. The next chapter is a completely different situation. But I want you to, I want you to understand, as we read this and we study what God wants us to hear out of this 14th chapter of the book of Acts, the beginning of the church is that through all the persecution even the beating almost to death even after being left for dead they did not stop they kept going and it should be a lesson to all of us 
that whenever things are hard, things are tough in your life, that's not a time to quit. Brother Ernie, that's a time to get up and get moving. Amen? How many of you have ever come through a hard time in your life? You understand what I'm trying to teach you? The message from God here is that no matter how tough it got, the main thing was to take the gospel forward. Amen? Jesus is alive, the church is alive, and thank God we're alive. I'm going to ask God's blessings upon the teaching, but then I'm going to come down front here, and if you want to look at this, I'd like for you to look at this to give you a little bit of understanding on the geographical part of what we're teaching. Jesus, our Heavenly Father, we're your family. We're brothers and sisters. We love you, Lord, because you first loved us. We're so thankful, Lord, for the history of the church that you preserved for us. We're so thankful, Lord, to have the power of God's Word in our life. To be able to read it, to understand it, to know it. God, we thank you for the birth of the church. And we thank you, Lord, for the grace that has preserved the church down through the centuries. Bless us tonight. Make us strong. Help us to endure. Lord, to take the message of Jesus Christ forward. Amen.